All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian Primehart's Tribeca Trade Group, and today is Tuesday, June 29th. So we got one more day of June to go, and then we're on to July. So we're just like that, we're almost through another month. And, um, you know, who knows? Maybe we see a little bit of volatility tomorrow with month end, um, but we don't know that yet. Um, we'll talk about what we do know in this video. Um, I just put together a video just specifically on market breadth, what it means, uh, how to interpret it, and what kind of environment we're in. Um, so for example, which, you know, so I just spent about nine, 10 minutes talking about that. So I won't spend too much time in this video, but just kind of more of the same before I get to, you know, some of the day's movers and some charts to look over. You know, once again, we, we've got weak breath going on. So um, translation, you know, what does that mean? It's just a more difficult environment to trade in. Uh, there's more things that are going down than more versus more things going up. Very easy translation. That's, you know, yesterday, I believe we had 20 declining names to, in, the, in the Dow. Today, we had 18 versus 12 advancing. That's a more difficult environment. Um, it just is what it is, right? So one of the things I talked about just in the previous video is that, you know, I know everybody always thinks that they're an above average trader, but let's just pretend that you're randomly picking stocks. Um, it's just right now a currently a little bit more of a more difficult environment, even though, and so it's a little bit of a divergence between what the performance is for the day. So for example, in the queues, we were up about 35 basis today, 35 basis points today, and the SPY was up a little bit today. Small caps were weak today. They were down about a half a percent today. So, um, you know, it's just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. Um, you know, a little bit more context is that, uh, you know, I looked. I look to take a little bit more risk when the wind is at your back, right? When you've got an adv more of an advancing issue type market versus when the wind is in your face, which is what we kind of have and what we've had um, for the majority of days over the last week. We've had days. We've had more days where we've had more declining issues than advancing. So just a little bit tougher of a market uh, to trade in. And the reason why I mention this is because. It's just kind of good as a trader when you recognize what type of environment you're in and then associate how much risk that you want to take in that environment. Really, that's the whole goal of, you know, analyzing, you know, a bit of market breadth and incorporating that into your analysis. So that's that. Um, and I spoke more in detail about that in the, um, in the video that you can also find on YouTube. So let's talk about some of the things that, um, that happened today. Um, just interesting, some of the positioning that we saw today. We saw, you know, for example, uh, you know, a couple of the standout names in terms of option activity, um, which I'll talk about here for a minute. You know, what names saw option activity, what names didn't. Sometimes it doesn't really matter. Um, you're going to see, for example, in my trades, half the trades that I'm in, they don't see any option activity. Sometimes the ones that don't see any option activity, they actually end up doing better than the ones that, that, um, that uh, you do see the option activity in. It's just the way it works. Um, AMD, this one saw a boatload of option activity today. Name was up 2.8%, you know, so... Um, you know, it's one of those things where the, seeing that many calls go up in a day, and I, I have the stats for you. I can bring, I could show you exactly what the numbers were for AMD today. But um, the numbers were, uh, let's see, there was 513,000 calls. 513,000 calls. So a lot, you know, some of that could be day trading. Probably a lot of it is day trading. But you could see it's a, it's a pretty skewed amount of calls that went up versus puts. So there's the price action. Where do I think this can get to? You know, that's where kind of our analysis um, takes over when we see that there's some buyers uh, on the tape in terms of options. But 91, 92, you know, very short-term targets to kind of look at. But, you know, keep keep in mind when this happens, it, it's a mad rush into the stock in the first 15 minutes or so and then it's more of a you know sometimes you know basically from 10 after the first hour the stock didn't go anywhere for the rest of the session so then it becomes you know if you're in it you know do you take a target um, what's your next target going to be if you're not in it and you missed it well, how much more upside is there right that's always kind of what you're measuring because you know we see a lot of names during the day that see option activity that you're just not going to be able to get into all at the same time that you saw the option activity or or what's even better is when you're positioned you know in the stock before there's option activity really at Tribeca Trade Group that's what we try to find right the names that are setting up 
and you know then once the momentum happens in the name then a whole bunch of call buying happens right we saw that with the chinese china internet group we'll talk about that group next but anyway that's what i see short term in amd um 92 could be where this thing is going to or gravitating towards also notice that there's a virgin point of control up here uh right there at uh, at 92 as well again why are virgin point of control so important because that is when a name is not breaking out to new highs such as an amd it's battling overhead resistance right and there's going to be areas specifically where a lot of buyers and sellers met up previously and if it hasn't been covered before right if we haven't gone to that level before there are some trapped buyers who probably want to get out you know, have been underwater and have been waiting for the stock to get back to so that they can go ahead and sell, right, and get out. So we see that. So that's that's also called overhead supply. So virgin point of controls are great indicator for us to say, hey, it could be as the stock actually stops there, similar to what it did right here, right? It hit overhead supply, another virgin point of control, and the thing stopped on a dime right there, right? And that was as high as it went, right? So that's what we have to contend with is that there may be some, some more overhead supply in AMD. And I see that right around that 92 range, all right? So that's kind of what you have to look for in that one. Apple also saw a lot of calls go up. Um, you know, I did try this for a day trade today. I still think the trade looks pretty good here. You know, we're getting above this range. You know, right now it's it's somewhat mature in its swing. You know, remember this was the situation where it had the developers conference and Apple is one of those weird names that rather than, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news, the develop co developer conference, actually the name often uh, rallies after the conference rather than, you know, leading up to the, for the whole buy the buy the rumor, um, you know, way of trading, which is way which is the way a lot of shareholder events work. But um, you know, this this has been trending nicely since that event, since it, it hit the 200-day moving average. So you know, you're in a relatively mature swing here. It doesn't mean it's over. You know, we can't. You know, we're not going to be able to formulate that because I don't see another VPOC up here till about 142. So it could be that's where it ends up going. But it may not. You know, that's a pretty far way away. So best thing that you could do is use a trailing stop at this point in Apple. But yeah, there's there a lot of call activity in this name. All right, so let's jump over to the, to the next group, which I, I thought was interesting for the day. And then we'll talk about a couple other areas. But the Chinese internet names, right? So they're, they are seeing... Um, they continue to see some interests, uh, speculative call activity uh, that we're seeing both in the Chinese internet ETF, which is the KWeb ETF, as well as in individual names, right? We're kind of see it in both places. Um, here is the trade in question, right? So it looked like what somebody did here was they sold the, uh, where is this, August? Uh, there's a few of these trades that went up, but the August 66 puts, Right, so 66 is basically right, or thinking that the low is in. So they're collecting premium and they're using that premium. And then what they did is they bought a call spread. Right, so the call spread that they bought was the August 74. So this, I think they rebooked this. That's why it's went up both on the bid side. But um, it looked like they bought the 74 calls and sold the 84. So they're looking for a measured move, right, over the next month and a half, uh, 74 to 84. That I think that's a reasonable, you know, considering. Other growth areas have moved pretty quickly. If this catches some more momentum to it, sure, I, I, I could see this, you know, jump up. Um, what I would be looking for specifically for a trigger, because this is basically right back at the 50-day moving average, and uh, I do like to wait for a little bit of confirmation first, and that would be a move over, over 7150. So that's where I have my alert. I, don't not, I do not have a position on in the Chinese Internet ETF yet. I'm happy to wait a little bit. And um, then I might have to chase a little bit, you know, because sometimes these things trigger and then they move quickly, but that's the case. Um, Baidu is another name, name that continues. Oh, I just wanted to cover this chart. Yeah, so great example of option activity, right? This is something that we covered about a week and a half ago, right? We talked about how that there was um, a, 
bullish divergence happening here between the RSI and maybe there was going to be a double bottom, right? So, you know, we figured this out and, and had, you know, a trade on or two in this space ahead of all the call activity, right? If you do, let me, let me say that I don't say this in the videos a lot, but I will tell you this, a secret is that if you do your homework, if you do your scanning, right? If you go through charts, sectors, individual names, and you find some signals, more often than not, you'll be able to get into names before you see the option activity. But you got to do your homework um, because, again, that's just how it happens, right? Everybody on Twitter loves option activity. But I'll tell you, something that I've noticed for a number of years, if you do your homework, you can get into some of these trades before you see the option activity. Now, sometimes that means, you know, what does option activity do? Well, it could be a couple things, right? Sometimes it creates momentum. A lot of times the, the majority of what it does is it creates momentum, right? You know, sometimes there's a steady call buyer like we saw in AMD today, which lifted, you know, helped lift the stock up a couple percent. Plus it gets everybody else talking about it. it gets everybody talking about it on Twitter. Everybody starts to say, oh, there's something going on. Every, there's a call buyer in AMD, right? So that's more buying. That creates momentum in the stock for the day, right? The other part is, which everybody likes to think um, is the case, but it's rarely the case, is somebody thinks that they always know something. Well, you know, if you've been following option activity for a long time, you know that the majority of the time they don't know anything. Why? Because the majority of the options expire worthless, right? Every Friday, right? We talk about, you see, you know, oh, there was this weekly call buyer and that weekly call buyer. Well, what happened at the end of the week? All those options went away. What happens is people talk about the two or three that worked really well. Oh, they knew it. You know, they, they got it, right? But, you know, and you could, you know, if you've noticed anybody who tweets out option activity, they tweet out 20, 20 different names a day sometimes, and then they talk about the two or the three that, that, that worked really well. What happened to the other 17 or the other 15? Oh, well, we don't talk about them anymore right? Because they didn't work, right? So that's, <laughs> so I talk about this once every couple of weeks with the option flow, but it's really good. You know, I, I go over this stuff so that you can kind of get a, um, so that you can kind of get a little bit of a head start rather than watching folks on TV just every day talk about new option activity and then they don't associate or they don't tell you if they made money on any of these trades. They just go on to the very next one and tell you how great how great the next option activity was, right? So it's a big smoke screen, right? So the more that you could get a head start with this stuff and realize that a lot of the trades that you see on the tape don't work, um, regardless of how aggressive and how awesome the you know the the activity was um the more that you could come out come up with a formulated process um the better all right okay so that's um you know my thoughts on the chinese internet etf and the option activity and how we kind of caught this beforehand as we do with a lot of trades now if you go through some of these individual names jd has been working well this was a trade that i had on about a week ago i took off for profits it's actually holding in here pretty well so again it's still you know it's it's still below the 200 day moving average so by definition it's in a downtrend but it's coming back pretty decently Baidu's doing the same thing. I did take a, um, I had a position, again, I've been jumping in and out of these things. Um, I had a position going into um, yesterday, which I took off and I put some back on today. I do think that this can get up to the 217 VPOC up there. All right, so that's um, a couple names. Also, you know, what's been doing well within this group is Neo, right? City slapped a, a, a price, uh, another price target on this one, let's see, what, what was it? It's escaping me what the price target was. Um, but I think it was like 75, I wanna say. 72, they raised 72 from 58. So NEO is continuing to trend here. You know, the, the other ones are acting pretty well too. Um, and then also some of the, um, you know, financial names. TIGR is pretty close to breaking out of a multi, uh, multi-week high. If you look at the one hour chart, we're right around that level of about $29, $30. Um, watch to see if this thing can climb above that $30 level for continuation to the upside. So I think that's an interesting one too. 
All right, so um, that's a couple names that I was focused on today. I was also, one of the things that I mentioned in the in the pre-market session was watch for a rotation. This The way that this market has been working, as soon as everybody seems to get all in love with one group, that's when we see a rotation. So there's a lot of love right now for high growth stock names. Um, you know, that group has per been performing very well for the, for the, uh, last couple of weeks. So I'm a little skeptical that that's going to continue, right? So I am trying to look for some other areas. You know, Home Depot was one name that I positioned in a little bit today. Um, I'm still carrying a position. Um, you could see it did make it over this one hour VPOC. That's what I was a little bit concerned about is getting over this one. Um, the next one would be up here at 322, which is where I'm kind of probably targeting a trade in the short term. Also notice it did get above the 50-day moving average. You could start looking, glancing towards that new value area for the month of July. Um, top of value is going to be right around 315. So that's a level that I want to see us get get to and stay above for the um, for the next month, right? But you could see we've had some decent um, sideways action here after a monster run up. So um, what I'm looking for is maybe this to kind of start to kind of get going um, in the fashion that it did prior but you know we'll definitely be taking another target around that next VPOC up at 322 all right so um yeah but the, the whole group by the way um worked pretty well and then there was a little bit of a fake out you know I mentioned you know a lot of people were looking at clean energy names today um they actually reversed a little bit and went actually finished red on the day however they're still holding the trend and it's okay to have a little bit of a digestion day. Um, but um, I thought we might see a little bit more rotation, which we really didn't get too much of. Um, the Chinese internet names were the most that rallied over the day. The semiconductors, um, let's talk about them for a minute, right? I spent a couple minutes and talked about them yesterday. They had some continuation. So even though we are seeing that bad. So we've got some good things going on in the market. We've got some bad things going on in the market, right? The bad is kind of markets getting a little bit stretched, uh, uh, you know, particularly on the tech side. But um, the semiconductors are just breaking out here. So, you know, I would like this. I would really like to see this continue. You know, I took a first small target today in the trade I put on yesterday, applied materials. Um, I did put on um, another trade that we saw some call activity in, which is ENTG, right, which is also breaking out. But you got this going on all over in the space. Um, ENTG is a name that I like and have participated in before. Um, I also like this smaller cap name if you want a little bit of extra risk. Um, HIMX also had a fine day today, up 5.8% for the day. And that is also looking like it's breaking out, right? And then you have a number of names that are very close to that have already do done. Skyworks um, went ahead and took out this VPOC here. So yeah, I, I would you know imagine there might be a little bit of digestion here after this move. Big move up 4.5% for the day. Um, Corvo, I think, was one that was hot today too also took out a VPOC. So you're getting a lot of participation. We already talked about AMD. We know about NVIDIA, which I'm still long in the TTG trend portfolio, still is acting very well. We talked a little bit about that one in yesterday's video too. Um, when I go over to the trades, which I show you guys every day, um, I tried trading, I, you know, one, so the first trade that I went into today was Oxy, right? So again, I was looking for something a little bit different to participate in, um, but it really did, it really fizzled on me. So, you know, that's why you take targets, right? Um, I took a target in the beginning of the day, um, one in here, and then I just took the trade off, right? If it's not doing what I want, you know, if I don't see big momentum coming back into these names, um, I'm just not going to mess with it in a, in a, in a weakened uh, breath environment, right? That we're seeing uh, more days where we're seeing weak breath than we are positive. All right. So really using that, um, you know, realizing what the market is is uh, signaling to me and then making adjustments and having to take some trades off very quickly. Um, KKR, this was a trade that worked really well. Again, I, this one I had some patience and I stayed in this one for a bit. Um, got that move outside of there. Zebra was another one. Um, this worked very well. Breakout here, um, call spread. I could only make a little bit more in the call spread. So I took that trade off for a little bit more than a double. Uh, 
Costco is another one that you've heard me talk about, right? Breakout and, you know, sure, this could go up a little bit further here, um, but I decided to take the calls off, um, you know, just in case we happen to see. So again, I'm playing a little bit defensively here. There's no sell signal in Costco, but again, I'm just kind of pleased with the, uh, with the gains in here. Um, couple other ones too. So I did get some things to, to work pretty well. Um, Carrier is one that you've heard me talk about in terms of an industrial along with JCI, right? I got targets in both of these names today. I actually um, increased my position in JCI the other day. So got my first target after increasing the position here. So um, this works, you know, these things worked particularly well. On the flip side, I decided just to kind of get out of some things that weren't working well, right? I want to cut the losers too, right? Um, still, I, you know, I've talked about this before. I'll talk about it maybe a little bit more on Twitter, if not tonight, maybe tomorrow night, about one of the things that traders struggle with, retail traders struggle with the most. It's cutting losers, right? Retail traders don't want to sell anything for a loss, right? I figured this out because I talked to enough retail traders. It takes a long time for retail traders to learn that it's okay to sell something for a loss, right? You just move on to the next thing, right? Ego, emotion, stubbornness gets in the way where traders can't sell anything for a loss. It happens, guys. Not every, especially with the with the um, examples of market breadth I told you about, that not every trade is going to work in this environment. You just have to realize it and get over it, right? And be able to sell something for a small loss. Um, you know, and it helps if you take a target or two because it improves your cost basis, right? So I took a target in this on the way up, and then unfortunately this happened. Um, I could have hung in this trade a little bit longer, but I didn't like how it took out the lows from yesterday. So I'm playing a little bit more conservative. Um, usually I would give it another day to see if it would come back, but I'm in the mode right now of being a little bit more defensive. We've had a nice run. And I, I don't see a lot of advantage to trying to go really, um, you know, heavy into tomorrow and a month where some weird things sometimes happen on the last trading day of the month, right? Sometimes there's some selling programs, so, you know, for whatever reason. All right. Um, that's it. I think I covered, I, you know, I trimmed a couple other ones. Um, CALX was another one that I took a target in yesterday. Um, I didn't like what it was doing. Um, on this move down today, so I, I cut it, um, and that's you know that's fine. It actually held in there um, towards the end of the day, but like I said, I, I would rather be a little bit lighter in positioning. Um, another interesting trade. There was about like five or six interesting trades that went up in on the option side, but Workday saw a big block of calls that went up. I think it was August that, um, if my memory serves me right, I took what they did. But it's been a long day, and sometimes I forget. It was the September 250 calls, right? Notice where the VPOC is, 255, right? So again, you know, I think a great place to kind of um, look for this name to get to. Also, if you look on the one-hour chart, you're going to find around the same virgin point of control. So there's probably some heavy uh, overhead supply up there at 255, but that's a nice place to to target your trade. Again. The reason why there's a virgin point of control is because this name is not at 52-week highs, right? It has some some distance to travel where there is overhead supply. I see that at 255. All right. Um, what there was one or two other names I was going to cover, but I think that's it for the day. So again, even though I'm kind of in more of a little bit of defensive mode, I did substitute in and out of some positions for the day. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.